Okay, so um, there's just one last thing about uh, constraint satisfaction problem solving that I wanted to mention, um, and that's uh, a, a more powerful kind of constraint propagation. We talked about uh, forward checking, and uh, that's wonderful. It lets us reduce the domain of other variables, um, has all kinds of beneficial effects, uh, reducing the branching factor, um, informing variable selection, um, allowing domain wipeout to occur earlier. Uh, forward checking just looks one step ahead, if you will. Um, when you set a variable, it looks at the variables that are constrained against the variables that you just set and reduces their domain. But it doesn't go any further. Uh, and Mac does that. So Mac is a more powerful constraint propagation mechanism. Um, let me show you an example. Um, so let's do our uh, classic Australia map. Um, we've got Western Australia, the Northern Territories, Queensland, beautiful New South Wales, Victoria, Southern Australia. Uh, here's the constraint graph. So I've drawn each variable, and uh, variables are the nodes in the constraint graph and the edges in the constraint graph exist between any two variables that have a constraint. So in here we're doing graph coloring and no adjacent uh, territories in Australia can be colored the same color in the map. So their adjacent territories are constrained. Uh, Southern Australia touches almost all the other territories in Australia except for Tasmania, which is an island. Uh, so let's draw the, the domains of the variables. Um, and since we're doing map coloring, the, the values for each territory are the color we've assigned it. And we're going to consider three possible colors, red, green, blue. And we have those for each, red, green, blue, uh, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Okay, so now we're ready to start solving. Um, let's jump right into things and uh, do Southern Australia first. Um, so if I draw the, the search tree down here, uh, here we are, we've decided to set Southern Australia. Uh, it's, it's a variable we've chosen for whatever reason. Uh, there are three possible values for it. Uh, and it's domain R, G, B. And uh, let's say we do R first for whatever reason. Uh, and then we decide to set uh, well, anyway, so what, what, with forward checking, what will happen is we've decided to, to set our uh, Southern Australia to, to red uh, as we come down this arc here. Um, and so then forward checking looks at the neighboring uh, variables, which are Western Australia, Northern Territories, Queensland, South Wales, Victoria, and um, removes any, vari any values that conflict with the one we've set. Uh, maintaining our consistency, MAC, our consistency will do the same thing. Um, in that it will go and look at the adjacent variables and eliminate anything that's not consistent. The, the wording of the algorithm is a little awkward. Let, let me just show you what it is. Ensure every value for x has a legal value in all neighbors y. So, uh, and the code is on the next slide here. Um, this up here is the, the main uh, routine and it calls the subroutine revise. Um, I'm sorry, that should no D there. It should just be revised. Or this, let's add the D here. Revised, revised um, checks uh, x and y um, uh, to make sure that for every variable in x's domain, there's a value in y that's compatible. Um, I, I hinted earlier that that uh, Mac is actually a recursive algorithm, so if we're able to reduce the domain of x, then we actually go and consider all the other neighbors of x. And if we reduce their domains, whenever we get around to reducing their domains, if we change, if we reduce this, though, we, we do all the neighbors of, of, of z. Um, so there, we have to keep track of all the work that's left to be done, all the neighbors left to track. There's almost like this, this wave front of propagation going out through the constraint network. Uh, so there's a queue. Um, that stores the, um, the 
variables whose consistency with each other we have to check. Now this queue is, is initialized by, um, we start off by pushing onto the queue um, uh, the, all the neighbors of the, the variable we just set along with the variable that we set. So the variable that was set. So um, for every neighbor of the variable we just set, we'll push them onto the queue. So we'll start off by pushing um, Western Australia, Southern Australia, Northwest Territories, Southern Australia, Queensland, Southern Australia, New South Wales. And um, then we'll enter this revision procedure. And while, while there's still something left to check, we pop something off the queue. We, we take a look at it. Um, so X will be some neighbor like Western Australia. Y will be Southern Australia, the variable we just set. We go and we look. Currently, we haven't revised any domains. We look for every value in the domain of, of the neighbor. We check, and um, the variable we've just set is this Y one. If there's no value in the domain of Y that's compatible with the, with the value, remove it from X's domain. Now, um, we have to assume here that this variable we've just set Y, um, assume that its domain uh, has been cleared except for the value that was set. So cross out green, cross out blue. Um, if we say one of the things we pushed on the stack was Western Australia, let's say we're processing that now. Uh, we go and look for every value here. Is there one in the domain of every, for every value in the neighbor's domain, is there a value in the set variables domain that is consistent with it? And for red, no, there's no value in the domain here that's consistent with Western Australia being red. So that is removed. So this is here. We're right down here in the pseudocode. Um, if no value in the domain of Southern Australia is compatible with, I'm sorry, this is in the domain of Southern Australia that we just set is compatible with the value, let's say, uh, red for Western Australia, we remove it from Western Australia's domain and we set revised to true. We keep checking all the values and we return true if the domain was uh, of X, uh, which is Western Australia, was revised. So we check and we check green. Is there a value in Southern Australia that's, that's compatible? Yes. Blue, is there a value that's compatible? Yes. We check the constraints between the two variables for each combination. Um, so after processing this, um, this pair, uh, revise will return true. Yes, I did. Um, I did cause a, a, a revision in the domain of Western Australia. Um, if the Western Australia's domain is now empty, return failure. No, it's not empty. It still has green and blue in it. Then we look for every other neighbor and we push them on the queue. So this will push Northern Territories on the queue as Z, um, where X is now the, the Western Australia that's just been revised. That'll go onto the queue and get checked later. Now, um, so you can see our consistency is more, a more involved algorithm. Now, in this situation, when we actually get around to checking Northwest Territories against Western Australia, you'll see no revision will happen because red is compatible with green, green is compatible with blue, blue is compatible with green. So um, the end effect of doing uh, MAC after setting Southern Australia to R is going to be just the same as forward checking. We'll just actually remove R from all the adjacent variables. Um, so, so far it looks like Mac with its super fancy checking isn't really buying us anything more than we had with forward checking. So why am I making this big deal about it? Well, watch what happens next. Um, uh, let's say we set Western Australia. Uh, we decided to do that variable. It's got two values in its domain, um, green and blue. Let's say we, we set it to green. Now we go to do constraint propagation. And um, so we'll do Mac. Um, we'll check all the neighbors. So we'll now, um, Southern Australia will be something we'll check. Um, Western Australia was just set. Um, and we can see that for every value here, there's a value there that's compatible. So we're set, that'll be fine. We'll also do um, Northern Territories against Western Australia. 
And when we do that, we see, okay, we'll cross out green. Um, and forward checking would have done that. But Mac will go further. Mac will say, okay, we just revised Northwest Territories. We better check all its neighbors. So we'll check Western Australia. We'll check Southern Australia. We'll check Queensland as well. So here's the advantage. We'll go to Queensland and we'll say, well, is green compatible with blue? Yes. Is blue compatible with blue? No. Reduce that. Oh, we just changed Queensland. Better check its neighbors too. We'll check New South Wales. Oh, is green compatible with green? No. Blue? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, we revised New South Wales. Better check Victoria. Victoria, is green compatible? Yes. Is blue compatible? No. So we've just basically solved the majority of the problem just in the constraint propagation routine. We didn't actually do any search. Um, now, forward checking cuts down on the amount of search by quite a bit too, um, but Mac is more powerful. And in fact, some problems when you run Mac, at, uh, you can run uh, Mac at the root, um, even before you set anything, you can just push all the arcs on the queue and check all the arcs. And sometimes the, the constraints are tight in one area of the problem. You can start constraint propagation. You can solve the whole problem with Mac because um, the constraint propagation just cascades outward. So it's a very powerful technique. Um, it's true here we have to branch on Tasmania, but you know we're gonna the first hit's gonna work. So I guess uh, I guess green would have been eliminated from Tasmania. I forgot that. So it got two options. They both work. So um, there won't be any search. We'll just we'll have solved the problem uh, with these two branches here. So that's really handy. No backtracking at all. So you can see how Mac is more powerful. Um, let me just show a quick example of Mac in the case where, uh, for fancier constraints, um, this is an example that's not in your textbook. Um, just to show you an example of a CSP with different different uh, variables. Let's say we have z and x and y, and x's domain is 2 and 5, and y's domain is 2 and 4. I don't know why I wrote a comma there. And z is 2 and 5, and the constraints are, there's a comparison between x and z that uh, z divides x and there's a constraint between z and y that uh, z divides y now if we if we look at this problem and, and do our consistency on it um, well we check for uh, let's say we, we we check here at z for all make sure there are values of x that are that, um, compatible so is there for every value of z is there a value of y that's compatible well let's see this is compatible with that this is compatible with that so that looks good um, um, let's see what about uh, z divides y uh, okay well uh, 2 divides 2, 4 doesn't divide 2, and 4 doesn't divide 5 either. Um, oh, whoops, sorry. We don't, there's no constraint in the opposite direction. My mistake. Z has to divide Y. 2 divides 2, yes. 2 divides 4, yes. 5 doesn't divide 2. 5 doesn't divide 4. Oh, okay cross that off. Now we have to go to the neighbors of z, which includes x. Let's see, z has to divide x. Uh, 2 divides 2. 2 doesn't divide 5. Um, so uh, this 5 uh, has no role in life anymore um, and is reduced as well. So uh, just, just wanted to give you an example of a, of a numerical CSP because uh, people do uh, use them in practice. And so this is Mac, and you can see it's reduced the domains a lot. Um, there's just a single variable to branch on now. Uh, okay, so, so that's Mac. Um, it's not always you, um, worth all the effort. 
Um, sometimes all this checking, I mean, it does take time. Sometimes it's not worth it if it doesn't cause enough propagation if the constraints are too loose in the problem. Um, there have been a lot of advances in how to implement Mac. Um, this is a fairly naive implementation that is okay, but it's not the fastest there is. There are faster implementations of Mac, and um, it, it used to be the Mac was considered very heavyweight and wasn't used all that much. These days it's used more and more, so um, it is worth knowing about. Um, so, so that's our consistency. There are lots of other algorithms for CSPs that we're not going to talk about in this class. Um, so uh, they make great course projects, though. Um, always happy to talk to people about CSPs.